And a new warning now for counterfeit Botox containing dangerous bacteria. People in at least two states have been hospitalized after receiving cosmetic injections administered in a non-medical setting. That is why it's so important to check the credentials of the person who is giving you the Botox. So to discuss this further, I'm joined by Dr. Nita Bajor. She's a triple board certified physician at Oakview Medical Associates in Greenville. You're also a specialist and clinical instructor in aesthetics and optimal aging. So a lot of credentials that you have there. Um, let's first talk about what credentials you should look for in someone who is giving you Botox. Yes, so Botox or botulinum is a chemical that is released from the bacteria, Clostri Clostridium botulinum. Mm -hmm. And so it must be done in a licensed facility uh, by a medical provider, someone that's uh, board certified in either plastic surgery, um, dermatology, ENT, or family medicine, where we are trained in doing these injections. Uh, it's a medical procedure, so making sure you uh, check out the license and certification of not just the injector, but who their supervising physician is, because nowadays we have we're inundated with people doing these injections, mm -hmm. and so it's really important. Their, their licenses and certifications must be displayed in their facility as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's also important to ask about you know, how long they've been doing this, what their experience is with this, and if it's not one of the physicians doing it, uh, some places you can have a nurse do it or um, a mid-level provider, making sure that they have access to the supervising physician because everything goes well till it goes well, but if you had have a bad uh, outcome or an emergency, that's mm -hmm. when the physician or the emergency room has to step in. So making sure they have you know, the chain of command there is very important. Um, also asking questions like, you know, on the consent form, knowing um, your medical history. We take a very extensive history. If there's autoimmune disease, mm. lupus, rheumatoid mm. arthritis, these injections have to be practiced within safety guidelines. Uh, because if you over inject or inject into the wrong muscle, that can be very detrimental. There have been cases where, as you said, you know, there's been respiratory paralysis, the lid drop, uh, mm. vocal cord paralysis. So there are medical procedures. And so it's really important for our community to make sure that you ask the right questions. Um, also get a copy of the consent form, what they make you sign, you know, mm -hmm. make sure you know which product you're getting. There are about five to six of these out there in the market, so making sure you um, know how many units you're getting, that's also important, where it's being injected. We all have to keep procedure notes, so just making sure you really understand what you're getting. It's yeah, important. yeah, well I was looking online and I know you can easily get certified for Botox just online, which yes. kind of scares me. I, I, you know, I wouldn't trust my sister to just give right. me Botox without some medical background. Yeah. Um, and I know sometimes people do Botox parties and yes. that's where it gets a little scary. You, you want to make sure. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm not a big fan of those. Uh, they must be, if they're done, they must be done in the licensed facility of the physician or the medical provider. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, active licenses, making sure that you know the injector supervising physician has some experience in aesthetics, mm -hmm. has injected, you know, patients themselves. That's very important. So. And let's talk about the type of Botox. You said there's different options. I know you have your uh, colleague here yeah. who's willing to demonstrate what it's like to get Botox. Um, so talk about the, the type of injections. So uh, the medical term is botulinum, which there are about seven serotypes. And the serotype that's being used is type A, which got FDA approved way back in 1989 for um, blepharospasm and strabismus, which is squint eyes. And then from then on, it got uh, cosmetic approval. So Botox Cosmetic. There's another one called Xeomin, which is a uh, purified form without protein. Mm -hmm. So that's really good if um, if it's wearing off too fast, you, want, you can try that. Uh, there's a whole host of varieties, but they're very smooth. They've done correctly in the appropriate setting uh, with good precautions. You see, I'm wearing gloves. You mm -hmm. want to make sure that you really cleanse the face well. And I've already prepped her skin, so I'll just show you a little bit. You want to make sure that you clean really well. And then it's, you know, depending on the dilution, we all are trained in how to mix it and really um, keep it in a solution form. Then we go ahead and inject. So if you okay. want me to try that, I can. How much time will that take? Oh, because you already did much. so much of the prep work. That's what <laughs> viewers don't see. She yeah. actually did a ton of prep work. Um, yes. So it's this, it's in this quick of a process. <laughs> yes, I'm just going to show um, you. You can close your eyes. <laughs> and that's literally up. how it is. You see, a little bleb. And like that. And that's Dr. Bajor, how many of these have you done? 
Oh, I've done thousands of thousands. procedures. So yeah, that and is I've a done question it since 2008. Ask, right? So I've done you it for a long time. You don't want to be the first test subject. Yes, no, I've done it <laughs> since 2008. <laughs> that's over six, yeah, 16 years. 16 now. years yeah. and over a thousand yes, Botox lots procedures. Of procedures. So yeah. that is what you want to look for. Make sure to ask the professional who has given you Botox, their experience, yes. credentials, how many times they've done it.